Do, 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 do. Another one bites the dust. Or can we do something about it? Can you believe it? Yeah. I would like to say neither can I, but I'm sort of starting to get a little bit despondent with regards to who decides to stay and who doesn't. And this is Dori Teanopsis Purple Gem Aida. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous orchid. Purple blooms, small blooms, but a sequential bloomer. And it can give blooms for months and months and months. And look at it now. In the last four weeks, it's dropped seven leaves, approximately. And <laughs> it's going downhill and we're gonna take it out. We're going to try and save it. But first, as per usual, any weak orchid, susceptible orchid, has the tendency to attract mealybugs. And they are right there, just little itty bitty ones. I have been doing this every day. When I saw mealybugs, I would do exactly what I'm doing now. I have sprayed the stem with hydrogen peroxide because the roots had started molding. So all this has happened in about four weeks. And I was tempted to film it day by day by day, but I kind of got busy recently, so I kept missing the mark and I don't really have anything substantial of footage to show the decline. And I'm intervening now because I have hope regarding what I did with my Phalaenopsis unicorn. And I think I can do the same here, but we're going to speed the process up hopefully a little bit, because I'm going to soak it in tea before we actually take care of the base and do all that kind of stuff. Let's, let me just show you something else. Oh my goodness, did I even say hello? I guess I'm so anxious to get going now. Um, hi, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, this is the base of the Phalaenopsis unicorn that is now recovering in the ICU. And you can see it's a goner completely, completely. And I was holding on to it. Maybe it would throw something out at the side, but there's nothing there, except I'm gonna show you what's taken this little fowl out. And I think we might have saved it, but we never know. Look at these little buggers right here. Look at that, that is scale, that is scale. They're probably dead now and anyway, it's not like here nor there. But that's what took unicorn out and it took it out fast. So we'll get rid of this, just disinfect the hands. I mean, I'm going to be doing this quite regularly, but let's take this orchid out of its pot. I'm very happy to see it's grown a little side growth, which is also quite loaded with mealybugs that I have not seen because of the way the pot was positioned this afternoon out here. Not good. Got to fight for this one. I love this little one. I know it's a common one to find again, and I can replace it. I probably will if this doesn't work, but I have a little bit more confidence now, thinking I may be able to work with this one because it does have roots. So, whereas the unicorn, oh, I don't even need to tip it. Well, that was easy. Whereas the unicorn had no roots whatsoever. Let's give me my, my lecker back which will be boiled and sterilized. And I am quite surprised at the state of what I see down here, which is kind of gross. Ugh. But let's have a look. Very surprised to see this happening. And I can't explain exactly why, but it did. And that's the result of whatever it is. And I'm not going to even try to estimate what the problem was, but it is a big problem. So 
I do have these roots there that I want to save. So I need to do my hands one more time. I'm thinking it's possibly Scale that did this as well. For a good part of the time, they were actually living next to each other. And silly me thought that I had them separate enough, I guess. I don't know, it's strange. We'll take the little plant that off, make it a bit easier to rescue each piece. And these are still viable roots. I want it to go all the way up here with the trunk. But these are still green. Well, one is. Right, so what we're going to do is put it into a tea solution and see if I can speed up the process and not have to wait as long as I did with the unicorn. I want to see if there's a difference. Now, it's not going to be a conducive enough experiment because we have a root to work with. But let me make the tea solution and get it in there, both pieces. Here's the little one. And I'm going to prepare a very weak tea solution. That will soften up all the sheaths outside and around. And then we can maybe peel them off without too much damage if I would just stop peeling because, you know, you get carried away. Whoa, look at that. We got there. I think we got there in time. I think we got there in time. Huh. And I wanted to soak it, but now I'm at it. Now I really want to get at it and uh, not have this soaking as well. Possibly spreading. Now, ideally, the time to be doing this, there's something happening down there, which is a good sign. Ideally, to, the time to be doing this is late afternoon and into evening, simply because of the, sorry, I just sprayed a bit of alcohol, simply because of the um, time of day the stomata opens, which is late after, like into the e evening and throughout the night. But, I don't want to wait that long. I'm hoping the trunks and the roots will help me with absorption of the tannins and the potassium from the lemon. So I'm gonna clean up here and we'll get that solution in right now. I have a little tupper here. I got some lemon in there and I'm gonna pour some hot tea, well, sorry, not hot tea, it's cooled off now, into this tupper and just water the lemon down. And I want a, quite a weak solution. So it's not like it's going to be, you know, you squeeze all the lemon out. No, just a few drops and that will be plenty. So that is a bit strong as a solution goes. And we'll just top it up with some RO water. And it is still quite strong. It doesn't have to be this dark to be effective. But I do want to check the pH and make sure it's not too acid. I mean, half the color of this is good enough. There's no need to go that dark. I don't have to dilute it though either. But if you don't get it to this color, it's not a big problem. So I'm just checking the pH to make sure that it is within a reasonable range for the orchid to absorb the tannins. That needs to go down a bit. All right. Let's get a few drops of pH down in there. Watch what we're doing because I have orchids underneath. Um, two. Let's try it with two first. I want to get to like 6.5. If I get to 6.3, I'm fine. I don't mind that. You see, that's a little bit too low. So I'm going to raise it up with some silicon. Now I could have done all this before filming, but I thought, you know what? Let's go through the little ups and downs together. 
So I'm going to try three drops of silicon before I do anything else and see where we get to. Make sure I close my pH down. If that spills because of the wind, then we're in trouble. Let's turn that around. Let's give it a stir. So I thought, you know, just go with the ups and downs. I can say, I've done this, this, this. The timestamps will fast forward as well. That's still a little bit too low for me, so I'm gonna take two more drops of silicon. Why silicon? Well, you know, it has cell structure components. There's also added potassium in there. And um, it saves me getting out the bicarbonate of soda. Let's give it three. Let's see what happens with three drops. Can I get you to 6.3, please? There we go. Whoops, that jump. 6.2. And I'm gonna do one more drop. Two more. That was three. There we go, 6.49, that's fine for me, I'll take it. Anything between 6.3 and 6.5, so that's fine. We'll use that. Now, I'm gonna leave it in there for about an hour, depending, hour and a half. It has a proper temperature, it's not hot. And we're just going to put the orchid pieces inside all the way and really cover it up. It's a nice windy day today, so I'm not concerned, but I did not want to leave this for nighttime because I do want them to be dry by tonight. So we'll just leave them in here. And the purpose of this exercise is to see if I can rejuvenate it a little bit faster by using the tea and lemon method, always bearing in mind that with the unicorn, I actually never actually had any roots to work with. In this case, I do. So we're already a step ahead. It's not exactly the perfect comparison, but I wanted to give this a go and not wait much longer. All right, see you in an hour. Well, it's been an hour. So let's get these new ICU candidates situated. And I'm going to prepare a little bottle thing for the small piece. This is far too big. And I think, thought I would do that here in case anybody is interested. I'm just going to cut a, a bottle down to size and then use the top half. And again, it's gotten windy. It was a nice day when I started an hour ago. So I hope that the sound doesn't get carried off Right, let's bend you over and get it cut in. So I'm just gonna make a little like air accessible little container to rest the orchid in and be able to cover it up. Looks a bit haphazard, but it works. Whether the orchid will respond to it is another question, but this does work. This would be my top as I drop everything on the floor. I want to keep it a little bit smaller than the bottom and then it becomes something like that. That looks good enough for me. And then to let air in, I open the top or I close it depending on what I'm seeing and how it progresses. So let's get some lecker in here, like that. And I just got myself some fresh water. And then these guys, as they are, this is promising. 
it has a growing root tip. We'll go in here, and if I have misjudged the height of the leka, then I shall take some out. But that's fine. And then I'll just put some water in the bottom to ensure enough humidity. And I'm going to leave it open until that orchid dries out. And then the same with the next one, but I have another different contraption because it's a bit taller. So I've left the lid on like that. I don't know if I'm going to cut it off. We'll see how it goes. Because I bent it back. Normally I don't bend things back, but I need to get her inside. But what I wanted to do actually was remove part of the soaking process was to remove all this stuff around the base. And I wonder if I can do that now that it has soaked. Let's see. I want to save those two roots, which are still viable, but get off as much as I can from the rest of it. Because it's going in a very humid environment, I would like to remove anything that can, you know, absorb too much moisture and become hazardous or, or decay while it's there, you know? That's the idea anyway. There's an attempt at a root. Wow, it's been there an hour and it's still crunchy. I find that super interesting. Why doesn't it just, you know, soak away? Should be really soft everything by now. Slowly but surely. I really would like to at least rescue one piece. As I said, these are not difficult to find, but you know, shame. It's tried with some roots. Maybe we can get those back to reactivate. Maybe not all is lost. There's a really a wannabe root wants to be one, so we'll be careful around that. And I think that's all I'm going to do for now. Famous last words as you keep peeling, right? So it has potential. It has potential. And that's what I'm going to work with for now. Let's see what needs to be done with my little contraption here. I need to take the lid off. Let's pour some water in first. And that's going to maybe be too much. That is far too much. Don't want it that high. Just above the surface level would be good. That looks to be about right for now. And I could just take this off. Maybe I can modify it. If I can get down a little bit with the scissors into the wider part of the container, then I can make a lid. And I'd be very interested to see if this is now going to be a little bit of a quicker recovery as opposed to my other one. You go in there nicely. There we go. That'll work. Now all we need to do, look how windy it is and look how quickly this has already started drying out. That wasn't even five minutes and it's drying out already. So I think that they're going to be okay. Time will tell. 
and we'll keep our fingers crossed. I really would like to have these in my collection. I don't want to lose them. And be silly just to buy one orchid again to replace another one. Oh well. So I hope that this was useful, um, watching me fiddle around with another rescue, another ICU. And uh, if there are any questions regarding what I'm trying to achieve here, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer it if I can, and if not, well, maybe your suggestions will help me in their recovery. Thank you so very, very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.